I wish you could see my hand gestures that I make as we count down before the clap. <laughs> you like, like it? I, it's like I am conducting an orchestra in the little office in the corner of my living room. I'm just like, <laughs> da, 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 like really you're like, like going for it. I'm, it's like you're conducting Pavarotti. Yeah, I'm this really is my like. House. It's, um, <laughs> Welcome yeah, everybody exactly to Overnight Drive. This is the you all. Know who I become? This is the all I kiss become. episode. Oh, is it really? Oh, yeah. I wish I got that memo. That's great. Oh, yeah. We're going to be talking for an oh. hour about all the greatest Kiss songs. Andrew's got some That's stories, really and so good. do I. We've been to all the Kiss conventions, and this is this is going to be the greatest Kiss podcast ever made. So let's listen. The tears wow. are falling for like the next five minutes. <laughs> we'll be back. We're going to be back in just five minutes. Just this kidding, is guys. really good. This is really good. <laughs> what a great podcast that would be, where you just constantly have Kiss playing in the background at a low volume, and you just talk about how good Kiss is for like an hour and a half. I can like, just, it's I, so much longer than you expect that podcast to be. I We can do it right now. So anyways, Andrew, how was uh, your week? That's okay. It's really good. You know, this is actually... This ties in... I'm going through a weird phase in my life, in my now, like... I think you could say I'm in my mid-30s heading uh, handily into my late 30s right now. And I have, I just hit a, like a point where all I'm doing is listening to metal. <laughs> Welcome to it's my world, man. fucking weird. Wow, are going to start fixing cars soon or what? I don't know what's happening to me. It was, it just came out of nowhere. Like I, there really was, I, I walked home from work a couple days ago, and I spent the entire time downloading metal records, and and <laughs> it's just hey, if you need really any metal. Odd. Speaking of metal, today is the anniversary of Cliff Burton's death, thirty year anniversary. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. I listened to the Metallica Black album in its entirety for the first time since probably nineteen ninety four. You're already was, taking uh, a very poser path. That's a very oh oh yeah for path. sure. Uh, listen, don't don't get me wrong. This is not any sort of metal purism by any stretch That's of the some imagination. White jean jacket nonsense. But mm -hmm. the guys who listened to the Black album in high school got laid, and us listening to fucking Danger Danger or whatever. DRI. DRI. Yeah, DRI. We just sat there with our... We fucking hadn't discovered deodorant yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we just sat there in our fucking putrid stench and watched other guys scam on girls. Not it's, much has changed, really, if you if you advance the tape yeah, quite a ways. The guys who can uh, get away with wearing sunglasses inside. Yeah. You know? And then uh, I could never pull it off. So I've always had a very wide, fat face. And I went into work today not realizing I had sunglasses on, which happens, because my mind is racing, thinking of ways to raise funds. Mm -hmm. I'm really into my job. And I'm introducing everybody to like things like social media autom automation, that kind of stuff. Oh, man. And what uh, is this spot that people don't understand these things? It's an Albany, New York. It hasn't, it hasn't come up the river yet. And I'm like... Yeah, you can just automate all these tasks really easily with this program, and then you don't have to ever go on Facebook, like the main page ever. And they're like, oh, well, how do you check things? 
Well, it's right here in an interface. What's an interface? Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I, yeah, I just kind of... and I were having a discussion, uh, I think yesterday, the day before, that not only is Albany perpetually in the past, but it's always in the embarrassing valley. I, there's like, a ska there's not show be the a other point night where it's like, yeah, it's like it's there's not going to be a point where it's cute throwback. Welcome it'll to it'll always be <laughs> it'll always be some bullshit. Welcome to embarrassing valley. Have you ever yeah, want to live much. in embarrassing valley? Do you want to live in the not too distant past? Yeah, I just want to live like three years ago. Like, I want to like go sell some <laughs> CDs and get some tapas and <laughs> and go to a ska show. It'd be really good. There's a band that sounds like Interpol opening. You'll yeah. love it. Then, like, maybe, like, uh, there's this new thing I call CrossFit. I think I'll do that Saturday morning. Uh, we should just call, just rename the whole capital region Do Over New York. Like, if you <laughs> fucked up the past three years, you could just go there and do them again. Do Over New York. Perfect. Be like, well, fuck it. Uh, you know, I've got 30 bucks to my name. I thought I was fucking awesome. Friend of 30 mine. bucks will fucking give you a month's rent there. Give you a couch to sleep on. That's it. I mean, all you need is clout. A good line of bullshit, clout, a skateboard, and you're fucking golden. Unless 20 of those $30 is the Harriet Tubman 20, in which case you will mm. never be able to get rid of that bill. You'll be buried with that bill because nobody will take it. <laughs> that one will take like, it. Oh, we don't take this here. We don't take this. Uh, uh, this is, uh, first of all, even, this was, even if this was this real. real? Yeah, they, they hold it up. I love the cashier that holds the bill up to the light. <laughs> it's my favorite shit. You don't know what you're looking for. What you are you no looking for? Look. It's not like there's a note inside the bill that says fake. You know, like, what do you have no idea what you're looking for in yeah. any capacity? Are you Even serious? if I pointed out the thing you should be looking for, you're not going to find it. It's so like the don't fucking, worry about it. I'm like, when I go to a fucking. Ugh, like, when I get asked for my ID, it's like, are you real? That's great. I, get ID- I mean, I still get ID'd, which is great, because I, I do not look 18. <laughs> I do not look 21 <laughs> at all. But I hate that. I hate when at CVS, at the CVS I always used to go to, that's right near the Chipotle that I always used to go to, my lifestyle has changed completely because of this job, and I couldn't be more Excellent. excited. Don't go to CVS and buy whole candy bars anymore, and I don't eat a Chipotle that's every a day. That's a great move. I'm like, I'm that's like, also a great move. It's so good. My, my body's like... Wow, you don't eat fucking eight thousand milligrams of salt every day, and then wash it down with a gigantic Cadbury fucking fruit and nut. Thank you. <laughs> we will, we will, we will award, reward you by having you live another year before you'll need a wheel, wheelchair. Perfect. Um, I wonder. I've always wondered who bought the Cadbury fruit nut. That's shit, uh, so now I know. Ever since I was a kid, my father used really? to like. Wow. Yeah, my father used to take me to like Caldor. He for you know and he would we would like go to the cigar section. They had like a whole cigar section. I sound like such an old fud dud, but it wasn't that long yep. ago. It's like maybe like twenty five, twenty eight years ago now. Um, we go to the cigar section, and then they'd have a whole like candy section of with candy bars from all over the world. That was kind of neat, you know. <laughs> it's the world travelers uh, yeah, candy bar. My section. father would pick up some great. from fucking like. Uh, I don't know. They they were something black, like black Jack Blacks or black something something or other. But Very they were nice. black cigar cigars, right? And then he'd take me over and get me some Cadbury chocolate that was made exclusively in England. At yes. The time. Then it'd be a fruit I nut. Love, I do love when you find those things. Like when you find a spot in the U.S. that has like the crunchy bar. Yeah, the love flake. that shit or the yeah. the arrow is uh, pretty good. Okay, Hershey bar. Let's not forget about the American the Hershey, stuff. The, the good American Hershey the bar. Good American Hershey bar that I like to melt into lube. Oh, that's true. I mean, we we have explored the Hershey bar. Yeah, uh, in the past, about, that's all it's good for. I do a thing. I go. I always go for the most ridiculous like if i'm gonna go and get like a candy bar and abuse myself like i'm just gonna get a snickers because it's like it's it, it it's the next level of stupidity it's just like you really sh- you shouldn't do any of this but you really shouldn't do this so i'm like oh well, hell yeah i it's, gotta do that one yeah, obviously it's like, uh, it's like eating wonder bread snickers same liking liking the colts like same shit yeah i actually had a thing my uh 
when I was a kid, my grandfather used to, um, he would always have like the little mini Snickers and they'd be frozen. They'd just be, he'd throw them in the freezer the and they'd be frozen. They, they're fantastic. So like uh, you, you couldn't ask for frozen, anything Frozen though. Frozen, frozen, really good. I, I urge everyone to try this and I'm, I'm urging everyone to try to eat like a fucking cup of sugar right now. So, <laughs> you know, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, you know, so I've always kind of gotten to the habit when I'm really going for it. I'm like, yeah, I'll grab a small thing of Snickers, fucking throw them in the freezer, you know, it's like an, an homage to uh, to my obviously past grandfather. But uh, he, I found out pretty recently, he started to get like dementia and you know the the, the shit you get. Uh, I'm fucked. <laughs> uh, by the way, just f- for anyone listening who has any sort of insight, both grandparents on either side of my family, both like expired well after the dementia set in and spent like years making life hard for both my grandmothers Can't wait. uh yeah th- from a genetic standpoint i am in very bad shape great about <laughs> it's, it's, 40 it's, 40 years from now me and gab picking up the pieces you never know pretty much are. yeah like that's it's it's gonna be on you guys <laughs> i i promise i pledge to take care of both of you for the next 30 if you guys pick up the slack and take care of me for the remaining 30 after that um but uh, I found out, uh, like, after, not too far after dementia set in, that, uh, that this dude had diabetes. And nobody in my family gets diabetes. Like, that's the no. one thing I will say. Like, nobody on, in the genetic part of my family had diabetes until I found out about this. Um, it freaked me out. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I, I, you know, we're, I, we're not as fucking uh, sugar resistant as I, I thought. In this past week, I like how you formulated an opinion like, "Well, at least I come from a hearty stock." We, I come from a hearty resistant. stock of people who can just eat frozen Snickers and it doesn't affect them, but it does. And like, I I had a little, I had a moment this past Sunday. I had some frozen Snickers. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta never do this again. Shit, like I gotta give up frozen Snickers. Gabri just gave me the look like. I'll I'll lose my fucking pinky before you stop eating that shit on Sunday, <laughs> which is true. I mean, it, it's it oh is God. very true. Let the man um, live. But yeah, it's it really like it 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 threw me for a second. I I I saw my mortality fucking jump out at me. Hey man, if you became I, riddled how, with dementia, what, what kiss song did you just fucking blow it on right there? I Let's just see. blew it, but I'm gonna bring it back. Hey man, if you were riddled with dementia, would you want someone to put you down? With a gun? How about a love <laughs> gun? Oh, yeah. I'm killing Andrew. It's time for him to go because his body is full of Alzheimer's because of too much sugar. We love you, man, but we got to say goodnight. This is always my favorite Kiss song to play in the van just because it's so annoying when he go when he refrains Love Gun the second time and that. Like, oh, oh, like man, I like it's how obnoxious. it's like love gone, love gone. Like he, Paul Stanley is the master of the re- reiteration. Yeah, like when he's like, oh no, tears are falling. Like the, the whole band singing, note perfect, tears, and then he's like, falling from your eyes. Yes, like he doesn't oh, have to really say good. that, but he did really, really good. I know I spoke about this last week, but I'll say it again. I love when he writes often from the little boy's perspective. It's so un- like it's so upsetting. <laughs> it's just so upsetting. Like in the morning, I lay I lay in my head and I think of the days gone by. Love that shit. Really, really good. I'm glad this is the uh, the kiss episode. That's uh, <laughs> that's what I needed the right now. The grudgingly kiss episode, where it's like, uh, hey man, you know, like I've got. I've got my pistol, I've got my Uzi of ooze, he actually said one time. Remember that? I don't remember that. What was that from? It's just like his onstage quip. He'd be it's, like... Oh, it's just his, I <laughs> see. It's just his, like, I, I gotta fill some time here while yeah, fucking got, Ace changes the string. Yeah, got, they, don't, they don't really tune that much. They have, like, an no, army they got a of roadies. That yeah. That's the, that's the gig I want to get. You know? I don't know, man. Like... Like changing guitars, I've, changing because I've shit. had, I've had bands that have come down from greater heights, uh, <laughs> play in my spot, and you know I'll do sound for them, and it, it have come down or you know for whatever reason are playing there, 
in between larger shows and have the off stage string guy it it seems what's the word i'm looking for not demoralizing but it's Fuck it seems dehumanizing is what i'm looking for yeah, it seems you see your fucking like a dreams bad use of that guy's time it's it's a, probably a very strange perspective cuz you see your dream being lived by somebody else right in front of you and you have to facilitate it that's got to yeah, be the worst i i mean i those were my favorite shows when we would get bands that <laughs> should have been able to play bigger rooms and couldn't like Juliana for theory. In Albany. Uh, who was the one? Um, Boy Stets Fire yeah. had a roadie and fucking calzone cases, and they were, like, yeah. ready for the world. I remember they used to come through Valentine's all the time. They had road cases. Jeez. They had many, like, they brought in fucking ten guitars, like it's Madison Square Garden. And we don't have to tell the fucking Harlow story again, but that one was like that. That was just like that. That was that, but such to such a cartoonish degree that it was just <laughs> like it was, it was just like whatever. Um, I did love. Do you remember? And I know you will. You'll at least remember the name because we printed shirts for them. Of course. Uh, that band Jupiter Sunrise. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they played a show that this was one of my favorites. They played a show at the spot. And had a uh, like a real we're gonna make it thing, like a real like <laughs> a big timey thing. We're but right on the precipice. It, uh, yeah, but the precipice never came. Turns out they were in Kansas. They were not like they were not at the ocean. They were they were very far from the precipice. Um, but blew all their money, I guess, on like a a, a tour bus or some shit. I you know I don't know exactly how the story what goes, it is, but though, like it's, it's all that money is entirely recoupable by the label. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for all, sure. Every time I see a bus parked in front of a venue, it's like, ha 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 ha. Like, no matter yeah. how much money you're going to make, it's not going to cover that fucking monstrosity. It's cool. like, a very you just drive a like a bonfire around and just throw it in there. Yeah. Like, oh well, you know, we just want the uh, we just want the band to be comfortable, so we we de- developed a van that runs on cash. Like we stuff cash into the motor and it burns and uh, for it the, just it makes works it, not great. Yeah, it makes it go. Uh, well, what we do is we get the cash from the end of the night, and we'll just stuff it right in the 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 uh, <laughs> the engine, and it makes it go. And strangely, it lasts uh, up until we get to the venue, and then we get more cash. I think it'd be funny if you had just have to hand it to the driver. Like, you open the door, and the driver just sitting there with his palm open, waiting for you to hand him all the money <laughs> you made that night. Yeah, we're going to need... Uh, we're driving to, to Topeka to play for, uh, you know, play like a uh, 500-cap room. Uh, Hold on, know. i got to pay Otis. Hang on a second. Yes, I can't do anything until Otis gets paid. playing for 150 people in a 500-cap room. Otis uh, won't unlock the fucking trailer that we're dragging behind us until he gets paid for that drive. Yeah, no... <laughs> <laughs> just throw the money in the and strangely enough the money's gone the next day it's very weird um so yeah so these guys played and they showed up in this giant foolish van and uh one of them was from albany so he you know was just like <laughs> it, it, just doing doing his bullshit of course and then the other dude was this like hyper hyper demanding like i must be heard uh, I love I must be heard guy. I must we, be heard. And I don't mean like I'm on stage and I must no. be heard. You as an individual must hear my demands. You know, like that kind of I must be heard. Everybody like, knows someone who's like that. And it's yeah, my, one like, of my favorite character archetypes. And there's a ton of them in Albany. There's like one in every corner. Yeah. The guy who talks a little too loud. No, a little too loud, a little too much, a little too whatever. So he's the whole time I'm like setting up. He's like, Oh, I need this. I need my DI here. I need this to be here. I need my auxiliary backup mic to be here. I mean, we're going to have a lot of people here tonight. Is there any way that, you know, the door guy can do this? And when and I'm like, yo, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Like you, you have to leave me alone. Like you, you get, you must leave me alone. So showtime rolls around. Nobody shows up. Like, four girls from college of St. Rose show up. <laughs> That's like literally it. Like, I'll I'll go on record saying 13 people attended this show, and I, I highly doubt all 13 paid. You know, it was like one of those situations. But I don't understand. We flyered the mall. Yeah, we flyered the mall. I mean, we were on whatever fucking stupid label. We're like, we, we have connections here. Like, this room should be packed. Yeah. So I must be heard, guys, really flipping out. Like, really, like, not 
not happy. He's where you can just tell he's really tense and whatnot. He's thinking conspiracy. They're a rival band. It's, yeah. Poison their audience. So they stay their plan and whatever. They're like kind of low energy. I, I get it. I understand. <laughs> Um, they're trying to like hype up the nine people that are there, and it's not really working. You can tell that this it's like it's a pastiche that was developed by like watching every warp tour that's ever happened and just sort of <laughs> aping it. Um, so it gets towards the like the end of the the show, and they're playing, they're doing their big finish, <clears throat> and uh, anyone who had never been to Valentine's, which is I feel like i've said that exact sentence many times on this podcast all but, of you um most of you yeah i've never had never been to upstairs valentine's where i worked it was a very low ceiling and it had metal rafters uh, and you could hang if you were intrepid and you went to like a hate breed show back in the early 2000s you could like hang from the rafters and like you, you know do all that shit so this guy's gonna do a big finish he wants to show how it doesn't bother him that no one's there and he's playing, he's playing, he's playing, and he jumps up onto the kick drum and then goes to jump off the uh, off the kick drum in a real, like, I don't know, some fucking Blink-182 fucking photo moment bullshit, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. yep. But he jumps off the kick drum, and of course, like, he's fucking Super Mario, jumps headfirst into a metal rafter. <laughs> <laughs> immediately like clunk and it's the same raptor that's can that runs like if i'm i'm like you know right in the front of the stage just all the way in the back of the room but it's the same raptor that connects his head and the one that's above me so as he do he hits it hard enough that i'm all Doom. the way back there and i hear the raptor <laughs> i'm like i'm like 30 feet away uh, that raptor has claimed an, many victims oh yeah i mean this is i don't even have to explain yeah how many times that happens but this is by far the worst Hits it, of course, falls off the drum. Uh, I mean, that was going to be an inevitability. And just does this weird, not quite step, not quite fall. Like, it was almost like he was shoved <laughs> easily eight feet off to the left. Like, clunk, and then flies off eight feet to the left and falls off the stage. Like, disappears behind the two giant amps. It's fucking great. And so... My first thought, I watched it, is that guy is dead. <laughs> like, I was convinced that I was going to talk to the police and he was going to be dead. Like, I, I did not think a human being would be able to pure, survive that operating shit. Operating on pure adrenaline like uh, like a deer that drags itself off the road before it dies. Uh, yeah, seriously. I get, like, he somehow gets back up on stage and, of course, is bleeding. Like, r blood running into his face. Just like, cool, thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Sure. And I go over there later. Not only did that dude fall off the stage, he fell through the stairs. Like, there were <laughs> no stairs. Stare. I had to do, like, a giant step up to get on the stage because he fell through the fucking stairs. It's a bad show. This should be a lesson in humility. I think this should be a point where it's like, okay, maybe we need to rethink this. No, Andrew. Not I, 15 minutes later, I, I hear like, him I love that in story. the corner. What's that? I love that story. But there's this one problem... Um, Oh, the, the least woke moment of that story was when you said Super Mario, and I believe that the singer of that band is a, of Italian origin. So is that's that a right? Problematic. I see. I I think it's not true. <laughs> I think that's just not a true thing that you just said. I, I said it, so now it's true. Uh, so now it's true. That, I, I mean, we it's, we're we're in an era where we no longer need to be uh, shackled to facts. So uh, yeah, maybe no, maybe I'm a bad person. Facts lie, dude. That's facts. Did fact. You, uh, the concept of facts is is an old thing. Did you manage to s make it through that fucking debate yesterday? I didn't even watch. I watched. No, um, yeah, holy fuck! Whew. What did I do? Well, I played uh, World War Two online. Very nice. A much, much better use of your time. By, uh, I Martin had to Martin. ferry soldiers from the origin point to Brussels, and uh, it's in real time, so it took me like two hours to complete the mission. How fucking boring. What? No, it's great it's for in people. Real like, time? It's time? Number one best game for a bipolar person. They so, you, so you have to play this game for five years? Pretty much, yeah, to conquer Europe. Uh, they they're in they've been it's been a thing since 2003 and they're in like campaign 
fifteen right now. Whoa. Yeah. No, it's like. But does it start over? Like it does. What if, what if I want to join? What if I want to play World War Two online now? But I, it's in the middle of campaign you fifteen. Jump in. Is you there can a jump new one starting? Yeah, you can jump. Oh, in I the can middle. just fucking roll in. I can just be Churchill. Be like, oh, I'm here. No, you have to just you start off as Axis or British or French. You can't be American because everybody's already American. They have like spawn limits depending on how the war is going, um, but I'm of course I'm Axis, and we're trying uh, yeah, to we've no been trying to get in, get into Brussels for two weeks. It's like a weird like it's a weird like revisionist history where like it doesn't always go the way it's supposed to go. But I um, took it upon myself to volunteer for a mission to ferry soldiers from. A nearby city like two hours away to uh, reinforce Brussels because they're going to make a big push over the weekend. So I, my uh, my truck along with a convoy of other trucks and a few tanks, um, my my truck carried uh, eight people, and, and I towed a gun, and we drove for two hours. Real time. I gotta ask a question though. Do you have like a headset where you talk to fifteen year olds while you do this? Yes. Oh fuck. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's called TeamSpeak. World of Warcraft people might know about TeamSpeak. Ooh. Um, Jeez. It mellows me right out. But they were talking oh, that's about. That's good. The, I'm glad. They were talking about the debate. While there's a couple of people on there who don't speak any English. Excellent. And they're like, oh, do, 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 or like speak very broken English. <clears throat> but everybody's kind of talking about the debates. And of course, everybody's a big Trump supporter. So I just like lay back and listen. It's a shocker. I should record it. I should probably like run Audacity and Stereo like, Mix and record my, my team speak <laughs> conversations with these people because it's like. I, I mean, my next question then would be is there the one guy who's like, come on, guys, let's keep it uh, yeah. factually oh, yeah. accurate? Yep. Oh, very good. Yep. That's it. Yeah, I think uh, I forget his name, but he's always on. And oh, his name is Malmonger, and he's always on. He's like, all right, Martin let's Vorman. focus on the mission. He's always on. Cool. Martin Vorman's always on. But when I try to talk about Nazi shit, they tell me to chill out. And I was like, are we? Yeah. Are we not Nazis? Did, did we all not make this blood pact together? Yeah, blood and honor. To the th- wow, la- to crazy. the last boot to the last bootlace, as Hitler said. <clears throat> Because Hitler was done dirty in World War One and saw the fucking embarrassment that Germany experienced by having to surrender in World War One, and he said never again. He said nah. He said nah. He did but the, yeah, but yeah, because he did the ultimate surrender by killing himself after poisoning his dog, which is a very low thing to do. If you believe that that really happened, then I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he escaped to port to like Puerto Vallarta or whatever? I mean, I would assume that he would have a body double that uh, that was killed by <laughs> uh, by somebody and made to look like a suicide. Then they burned that body, and uh, the Russians pretended they didn't have it for like a long minute, but then they did, and then was, and then really the whole time, yeah, he's like, he's just hanging out in Brazil. Just I can't just wait until you're it. like a dictator. That would be cool. I'm going to be your, like, Cato Kalen of, like, when you're the dictator. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when Cato Kalen lived in Hitler's guest house for a really long time? Yeah, yeah when Cato Kalen. Weird time in history. It's like Martin Vorman, fucking Erwin Rommel's ghost, Goebbels, Blondie, their dog, or Goldie, their dog. They have Braun who's fucking crying. She knows the ends there. <laughs> you know Heinrich Himmler's wife? Named all of their kids with, with H names because she was so into Hitler and what he was doing. Wow. It's like Heidi, you know, Heinrich, Hildegard, you know. What the fuck are these Harvey. kids now? What are they up to? They, it's funny you should ask. They were all poisoned when oh, it was evident. There we are. Yeah, when it was evident that the war was lost in the last week of battle. She poisoned all of her kids. And then herself, and she said that it is her highest honor to die, to be with the Fuhrer. Well, I'm going to ask a question that I think is probably timeless. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those things you could have asked at yes, any point I, in human history. I do, I do love you, Andrew. 
<laughs> you don't have to ask. Can people just chill the fuck out? Like, will you just chill the fuck out? Like, no, I'm going to poison my children so they can be with the fear. Like, <laughs> hey. Or you can just chill out. <laughs> just fucking have a coffee and calm the fuck down. Like, sit outside. No, What's wrong they couldn't with you? Bear, that's true faith. They couldn't bear to live in a world without the the strict guidance of the, the Fuhrer. It's like if, if fucking... When Obama leaves, if I killed myself, <laughs> blew my fucking brains out with a love gun <laughs> because I couldn't deal with the fact that I was going to live in a world without Obama's touch. Post-Obama world. Yeah, Ob- Obama Hussein Obama. <laughs> I couldn't. I heard that um, Donald Trump was sniffing cocaine throughout. Yeah, he he had a sniff thing happening. I honestly, like... There was a point where we were getting, like, we were get throwing dinner together, and it was just on in the background. And I missed this. Gab told me that apparently at one point, one of, like, the CNN commentators, this is before the debate ever started, uh, said that for uh, for voter sympathy, that Hillary Clinton should at some point cry. What? During, during the presidential debate. No, it's a bad like, idea. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Of all I mean, uh, the yeah. things you do in life, people are hardest on you if you cry. Like, if you can get DWI, oh, I got fucking DWI. You're like, men, you know, like, oh, fucking so hard on people for crying. It's like, oh, if I got DWI, no problem, you know. But God forbid it, you, and you're crying in your mugshot. It, Forget like, it. What? Are you fucking insane? Like, oh, maybe she should cry. What? <laughs> The fuck? What? No, because you know that people would jump. People on both sides of the coin. Oh, for sure. Would jump all I'd over say, like, I, Who is the person who gets paid to be on TV and say that? Like, that's fucking nuts. That's fucking insane. No, you're that's an insane person. Yeah, but they're they're making major paper. Making that bank, maybe. That bank maybe. Say, major pay- maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Hey, we say we say dumb shit every week. We should be paid. Should we be I mean, paid? Should I contact our? Or should I finally call in our, our contacts? No, don't. I, I we we gotta just be clear. We're not ever gonna be paid for this. I, it's just not gonna no, happen. I, like uh, I, I'll, I'll sell a t-shirt, but that's like I like no I, no advertising, no fucking Patreon, no 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 no, no 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 just just no I like no made a Patreon for no, us. No 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 no. This was a while ago when it first well, like. I, I'm a member to keep me grounded. I'm a member of this totally like normal, straight laced white person like podcast group, right? That's just like how to do your podcast, just to like get like like you know tidbits and notes and whatever. Yeah, just like technical stuff. This like one one guy's like, hey, I just did my first episode and I got thirty listens, and and people are like, awesome, way to go, dude. You know, like that kind of shit. So, um, and Patreon was like starting to come up. And people are like, oh, I don't know. And then I looked at it, and I made one, and I was like, I have to t- ask somebody for twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> like for for, but like recurring twenty bucks. I'm gonna. We should either not do it or ask someone for forty grand a month. Yeah, that. I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> that. Uh, let's call it what it is. That's what a a like a patron does. Yeah, they don't exist anymore. An angel and investor. I, I I think uh, Patreon probably makes a lot of sense in very specific situations. Ours here is not one of them. No. You know, it's just, it's just we're not. not. We're not helping out, you know, starving children. We're not. No. We're not buying wheelchair tires for the disabled. Yeah. No, I like, I'm. We're not helping a, a, good. a fucking pregnant mom get off junk or anything like that. I mean, I might do all those things, but I don't. I don't. I don't need a recurring payment for it. That's just a. a, a <laughs> I a would basic, like basic decency thing. I would like know? to, to right. crowbar in a fucking Noxzema ad or something like that at some point. That would be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm perfectly happy doing merch from time to time. I think uh, we were talking about putting some new stuff out. I think it'd be like Teespring. a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah. Degeneracy. I, just, I don't. Ha- I just don't have the desire to make this a job you know like i think no. 
No. I do pretty okay at my job, and I – this is sort of a thing. If I lose my job tomorrow, my like a bomb drops in my job, and it just doesn't exist anymore, I am 150% confident that I can get money. Yeah. Same. I just know I can. You know, it's like <laughs> – and you know what? I'm not saying that I can get a lot of money. Like, I might have to do something that's, like, shitty. Like, I might have to, like, work at the Taco Bell KFC down the street for a minute until I get it together. And that's, like, that's fine. To me, doing something like that is, like, less of an indignity indignity than trying to slap a paycheck out of something that's just not there to pay. (laughs) Does that like uh, do I sound insane? No, I feel like I'm not making any sense. Super, super just, clear. Super the uh yeah, makes super I don't sense. I don't even know why this is such a hot button issue <laughs> for me that I go off on a tangent <laughs> about it. But it's just well, like I mean it's I a know. thing where I mean there's a lot of podcasts that, that are like uh it became it's like the Mark it's like the Mark Marin effect. Where suddenly everybody's like, Oh, I wonder what the ground is something here. Maybe, I mean, you know, it, I fucking if you can find a way to fucking make it work for you and you like that works within your I don't know like your your sense of purpose or your morality or whatever the fuck you want to call it it's fine it's cool like, you know to like do something it's like buying guitar strings yeah I, I trust I got patreons for other people you know like I fucking I pay other people to do their shit it's like it's not like I'm not I'm not above the concepts it just doesn't it just doesn't but for work our, for me here. what we do like buying guitar strings like i'm not gonna ask somebody for guitar strings yeah i'm gonna no, buy it's part of the sense. process i'm going to buy if a cable wears out i'm not gonna take to the keyboard i'm gonna go to the fucking store and buy a new cable it's okay yeah. it's fine it's all right i don't know how we got here i don't even know how did like it is just i got so amped up on it but it, it's it, okay it's, andrew yeah. you're obviously just working through some steam just i'm just working good. through some steam oh all right Hotter than hell. Sounds like he got shot. He's like, hotter than hell. Ooh. Yeah. Like somebody, like, someone from the crowd pulled out a revolver. They're like, we've had enough. <laughs> they pulled out a kiss I love gun. I can't take it anymore. That's it. I can't take I gotta, it anymore. I'm going to shoot him with this love gun. I'm gonna, I pulled out like, an official kiss love gun that somebody foolishly left a bullet in. And I was like, you got to pull it down. And blew him away. And then they, you know, they, they he was dead. But they're like, they're they like replaced inter- him with a lookalike Paul Stanley. Well, and, yeah, uh, I mean the show. They're like new. they're like in show business. The show must go on. Kisses. So like, if any member dies on stage, they have to recruit a member of the audience. Oh, now, wow. imagine whoever, whoever breathes in his last breath becomes the next <laughs> fucking uh, member of Kiss. Now imagine if Sean Duty was in the audience, and he hadn't played bass in years. Say it'd be highly unlikely that Sean Duty would wind up there. Free tickets, whatever. Wow. Sean Duty looking for a roommate, by the way. I feel. Oh, is that right? Oh, wow. Right. Weird, weird fucking opportunity for somebody to live with Sean Duty and fucking get yes. that show in the flesh. Signal blast. Sean Duty looking for a roommate. Eight hundred bucks a month. Looks like a nice place. I have lived with Sean Duty in the past. He's uh, he's a good roommate. He yeah. keeps his shit clean. Yeah, the kitchen looks. Place looks clean. Doesn't look like no, this isn't a punk house situation. Is he living solo right now? No, Is he just fucking hanging a, up by himself? It looks like he's got at least one roommate. All right, okay. But um, hey, whatever. Just live the Sean, live with Sean Duty, and you can like uh, talk to him all the time. Just you could just interrogate him constantly. Yeah, just ask him. If, you, if this is a perfect opportunity, if you want to change your life and move to the big city, reach for the golden ring. You know, fucking work four jobs, whatever you want to do. But this is your end. Got fucking juggle four Patreons. Yeah, if you're sitting on sixteen hundred bucks, you gotta put the Patreon up. That's what I should suggest to Sean Duty. You put the Patreon. Uh, I Patreon. fuck. You know what? If we did a Patreon for this podcast and Sean Duty just did a Patreon for being Sean Duty, he would easily fucking uh, oh, he would yeah. make more money than us in a heartbeat. We'd make no money. I don't think. I just tried to sell on Teespring. Just tried to sell bare mattress shirts and it didn't make the campaign. <laughs> ah, there we are. 
<laughs> I couldn't even sell 50 shirts. 5 0. <clears throat> Didn't make it in time. You need to write better copy, man. I, whatever. Um, I think it's best suited for over, overnight drive material because we can make anything we want, which I love. That is true. So we can just, like, uh, hey, we want to make a Sean Duty rules shirt. Perfect. We can do it. We want to make a Reach for the Golden Ring shirt. We have at our disposal one of the greatest graphic design minds of our time. Scott Seguin. Scott Seguin. <laughs> That's true. So, who uh, I'm in a band with. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, it's a cover band. We got together to record, not to record, we got together to play Black Sabbath covers for the annual punk cover show, which has devolved into, you know, people playing like Dropkick Murphys and shit. Yeah, I, I cannot, I cannot believe this is still a thing. It's still a thing. Still going. I'm going to fucking walk in there with a suicide vest on and just end it. Like, that'll well, be the last one. You've got to bring two suicide vests because there's also a rival cover show that happens over the summer because this is Albany called Summer Undercover where people can cover normal bands like Sugar oh. Ray. <clears throat> what? Yep. <laughs> what? No, you're missing out, man. This is the whole thing you're miss you've missed. These are things that I even participate in. Sometimes. I'm feeling low right now. Remember I I played Kate Bush over the summer and nobody watched. And you rep you loved the photos. Wow. Yeah. No, it was great. Does Avril Levine was okay. born today, by the way. Thirty two um, thirty two years old. <clears throat> I hate that you just told me that. Like I feel I, I don't know what I was about to say. I like I had like a point, it's done. <coughs> I don't know what okay, to well, do. It's over. It makes you feel any better. If you had to choose the biggest historical more moment of all time on uh, September twenty seventh. We've got a few to choose from. All right, fire away. Not only has, uh, so we've got William the Conqueror and his army set sail, uh, beginning the Norman conquest of England in 1066. Pretty else. 1905, uh, Albert Einstein introduced the uh, E equals MC squared, a.k.a. the theory of, is that theory of relativity? Oh. That is theory of relativity. And Avril Lavigne was born. Wow. So. And Elon Musk pr- unveils his plan to go to Mars. Yeah. Wild day. I want to go. I mean, I'm going to stick with relativity on this one, but um, <laughs> cool. Cool day. I think the, uh, well, actually, no, in uh, 2012, a mass shooting takes place at Accent Signage Systems in Minneapolis, killing six people. Oh, it's got to be that. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the, uh. Did we hear? Did, is this true? I, I caught the second hand. I don't know if I'm I'm making a bullshit. That a dude in I think it was in California shot up his law firm wearing a Nazi uniform. <laughs> no, is that real? I, I would. I, I mean, that's a great idea. Okay. No, I mean it's a terrible idea. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't give any ideas. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not going to shoot up my my firm. Is great. I'm loving it, but I love my I'm new job. I'm glad. I'm glad. I. I I hope you don't have a Nazi uniform. No, my father used used to though. Oh, no, no shock. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll stick with. I'm going to stick with relativity. I do want to go to Mars as well. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled on that idea. But yeah. So when you like, I was thinking about that. Like, you would probably never come back if you went there. Well, no, you you got like you'd have to be there for 24 months or something like that. Then you could come back. It provided you survive. So you'd be gone. It takes two years to get there, right? No, it takes like three months to get there. For real? Yeah, it's only three months to get there, but you, the, the time, like the window between when Earth and Mars are close enough to make it a three-month journey is, is only happens every two years. Okay. Give or take. So you gotta, it's like, it's like signing a two-year lease, effectively. That sounds made up. I know, you know, this is, this is how the greater universe works <laughs> sorry um <clears throat> uh, since our uh i heard from a few people that me reading this connections was great that uh, that hit a spot go for so it so i'm gonna do that again <clears throat> and i need some 
heartfelt music behind that isn't Kiss. Which is tough. Was it Michael Bolton last time? Was that what we had going? <laughs> we had at one point Michael Bolton, but um, then I, we had some sad piano music. Musician is the best way to learn, practice, and master the piano. Oh, fucking cool. cool. So, so instead, we're just gonna have an advertisement playing. Musician. In the it's called Musician. Oi. This one's actually. I just found a random video, and it's like. This is dedicated to this guy's girlfriend. This song's entitled It's Hard to Say Goodbye, and it's just pictures of his girlfriend and Ooh. him together. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, there's some fucking really good ones out here. This is... Uh, <laughs> like, you shouldn't be allowed to do this, you know? <laughs> Black Kia with football plate. <laughs> Not sure if you read posts on Craigslist, but on Thursday I saw you getting gas at Speedway. Uh, you were driving a black Kia Optima. Car stood out, but not as much as you did. You have long dark hair and are very petite. Your plate had a football team on it. Your team stinks. But a girl that likes football is pretty cool. Please respond You're if you right. see this. What team really, do you uh, like in a heading? A latter day poet. That's fucking great. <laughs> Jesus. Is Valerie out there? <laughs> hey, Valerie. <laughs> Back in the day. Like people are named Valerie still. <laughs> it was Valerie. I hope Valerie's out there. Hey, Valerie. Back in the day, you were a legal secretary, recently divorced from a gay man, and what I was an emotion. <laughs> I was an emotional shell of my former self after splitting with my wife and getting custody of my two kids. Uh. I think you may have remarried before. We almost reconnected on Quest. Do you know what Quest is? No. Quest what? Personals, which is a is a fucking party line. Which from the like from the late nineties. So this motherfucker is like seventeen years later. He's looking for Valerie. Anyway, I oh am thinking. But, but the coup de gras. If Valerie was on the fence, this is gonna send him send her over to the good side. <clears throat> I am thinking of you. How you smell and taste. You smell, Valerie. <laughs> I'm thinking about how you smelled. <laughs> like you're. You sm used to smell. Oh. Northern Pines Trailer Park. And uh, there we go. Hey there. Is there any attractive women in this park looking to have some fun today? Oh, there's man. There's gotta be one somewhere. Gotta be one somewhere. If I know anything about trailer parks, there's at least one attractive woman just floating around looking for a good time in there. Last one. Happy anniversary, Shmoo. It's been a tough year without you. I know you won't see this, so I guess no. it's just for me. But I miss you so terribly much that it physically hurts. So often I've cried so hard while driving that I can barely see the road and almost crash. Pull over! <laughs> I love you so much, even though you don't love me anymore. Yeah. I will always feel just as deeply for you... And I would always be there for you if you called on mm, and then the message is cut off because they have a character limit on Craigslist now. So, sorry, Shmoo. Fuck. You are cold busted. God damn, wow. I got one more, sorry. Tom Kiss, <laughs> I came on your wife. <laughs> Tom... I know it's been a while, but I finally got to stroke my cock to those pictures of your wife. I gave her a few good words and used her name and came all over her. Ugh. Had a good time. But I went to send you one of the pictures and it said the email address didn't work anymore. No! Email me at come on your girl for you at Yahoo. It's a pretty good set with my cock all over her. Uh -huh. And also, I blew a nice load over okay. her. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Good for you, man. Thanks.
Let's not get to go back to work. We'll, we'll talk about this later. Hey, uh, cute Latin collecting cards Sunday afternoon, Hannaford. My music ran out. I know. Did this guy run out of pictures of his ex-girlfriend? I should feel like we should be, should be playing Evanescence for all of these. <laughs> Can't hold back. Cute Latin, about 20 years old, collecting cards this <laughs> afternoon in Hannaford and Latham. I haven't seen you there since last spring. <laughs> I've, run in, I've run into you, running register, collecting carts, and in the entrance. Sometimes I see you walking home. Always seems Who there's an attraction. are you? Always seems there's an attraction there, but we haven't said anything. There's not. I'm older, 40s, handsome, uh -huh. beefy, fat, mm. yep. light hair and eyes, and a little shorter than you. Short and fat. You, woo, man, you're really fucking selling it here. He probably has a short but thick cock. Saw you today from across the parking lot, and I'm pretty... And it's cut off. <laughs> this cut off is amazing. That's great. <laughs> I love the cut off. It's so fucking sad. What the heck just happened? I missed the person I fell in love with before she lost her brother and took to drinking. It oh crept up so slowly, God. scarcely noticeable to someone who hadn't seen it before. A couple beers a night here, a glass of wine or two, and you know, you're not always the best version of yourself when you drink either. Use your best judgment. Um, wow. Okay, that's it. <laughs> wow. I, oh, there's so much gold in Albany. I saw you at the book sale today. Yellow sweater, polka dot pants. Absolutely stunning. Good taste in the literature, too. Let's grab coffee and talk books. No, 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 no. You guys and to. your fucking eye contact. We made on eye contact. You must want to fuck You looked me. at me, so now I must find you. Is eye contact some kind of gay signal? There's eye contact, and then there's serious eye contact. Ugh. Wow. Somebody really had to work something out there. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I, uh, that's, uh, that's something that I really have to work through, actually. So I posted most of these. Oh, that was, that, that was, was all you? That was right. me. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's rehearsed content right there. Would you like to turn to some questions? Yeah, let's knock a few out. Well, there's a couple of them. Uh, no, uh, thankfully, no racist, vile racist comments. I, like that, last that, time. that dude got it taken care of. He, he fucking, he exercised himself. Um, here's one about. Okay, well, I'm a longtime listener who needs girl advice. Well, you've come to the right fellas. Yeah, not a problem. Just make eye contact at the book sale. Everything yeah. will work out. <laughs> Make sure they work. Uh, make sure you go to where they work for years, <laughs> and Just watch them walk home. Yeah, make sure that there's chemistry at every corner. Like when I go through your line, when you're out getting carts, when I see you walking home, <laughs> when I follow you home. No, um, I'm a long-time listener who needs girl advice. So there's a girl on my course who I'm really into. Um, a girl in my course. I assume this is a, something. Uh, European on we'll my call it continental. Yeah, it's kind of. She's a punk. Uh oh. And everyone else on the course is a middle-aged square, so there's no competition. I think this is like an apartment building, like a course. Okay. Yeah, I don't know hmm. her well enough to be friend zoned. Oh, dude. If this this is obviously a man because a woman wouldn't say friend zone. Um, she recently declined my offer of lifts to classes. All right, so classes. So we're, we're talking about yeah, classes. She turned down an offer for you to give a tweet. <laughs> she turned down a complete stranger's offer to get in her get in your car. Good call, girl. How do I pursue her without going full nuclear? Do you want to hang out sometime? I know who dares wins, but I'm worried about blowing it blowing it up in my face, and the remaining free three months being an awkward hell. I mean, an awkward hell? I, would that be hell to be turned down and go, oh, all right, and then like have to deal with is, that again? Do that you hang, I mean, is, do you want to hang out sometime? Is that full nuclear? Yeah, I don't know. I think to just do that. Like, what's the worst going to happen? She says no, and then, yeah, you have like an awkward week, and then like something else happens, and you see something shiny, and you're over, or whatever. Like, it's just, there's no, 
You make okay. You make a con make conversation with her. Honest, honestly, make good. Just see if you have anything in common. Some 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 semblance of chemistry you can fucking tie your hitch to. Okay, man. And then, once you get a little, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, you know, blah blah blah. But not too familiar. Familiar, just like hey, be like, yo, we should hang out sometime. And if she's like. She put, first of all, she won't say no. She'll say, yeah, sure. And then never do it. And then it'll be an awkward hell. But if she's down, you'll get the number. You're all set. Texting. You hang out. Fucking you have that two, tentative Tuesday date. Second date. Weekend. Boom. Go out. Slam. Wow. For you get fucking married. Then fucking... <laughs> Your slam, fucking slam from a couple months. Boom. She fucking, she starts taking St. John's wort, and it fucks with her birth control, and she ends up pregnant. Oh shit! And then you've got to fucking, they gotta marry her. Gotta. So well, I thought flipped. you were to get married. What, what are you gonna get married again? We're gonna marry you a second no, time. I, I fuck the chronology. They're not married yet, but he has to get a man's work done, so he marries her, and they have a child together. And it's way too early, way too young. And then he becomes the night manager at Speedway <laughs> for money. That's it. Needs money. Needs money. And fucking babies are very expensive. You've just described the, like, you just told the story of Up the Junction by Squeeze, basically. <laughs> it's what you just did right there. Yeah, a little British theme. And then uh, the girl who you should have talked to comes in and flirts with you while you're working and you watch her leave and you are forever in an awkward hell and that's it uh, then the kid's like uh, 18 and hates you uh, hates you <laughs> I'm going to ask a different question though uh, let's, let's rewind back to the present um, <laughs> I hate the present doesn't life feel better when you're on the offensive no shit yeah like when you're kind of uh, when you're like in pursuit as opposed to like Ooh, I, you know this um wouldn't it feel better to like uh take the shot and lose and be like all right well that's where we're at than to like sit and like go through like to me an awkward hell is a situation where you're sitting around like wanting to ask something and not able to like that seems way that seems what like sh you could ask and she could hit you in the chest with a hammer and it'd still be like a push at that point it's you know it's even just scary like, it's not michael jordan yeah, top of the key deal. versus not a big deal. It's michael jordan top of the key makes the jump no time left if he makes it he's a hero if he misses oh well he's not I mean, going to make that shot yeah. every time but he took oh. it Michael Jordan leads the NBA in games won at the buzzer. Yeah. Michael Jordan also leads the NBA at games lost at the buzzer. Yeah. Like that's just it. It's just, like it's just it's it's um, you just take the shot. Go and for sometimes it. it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's at it. least you're you're on the offensive. You tried. There's you know there's no shame in that. And who what do I? She's too so fucking cool. She can't get a cup of coffee with you. Whatever. She doesn't owe you shit. It's possible. That she, I mean she but, she's a punk. So there's something wrong with her. But yeah, I mean you know she has like, all kinds of shit going on. So it's a lot of shit happening. She fucking her dog died and she hasn't gotten <laughs> over it still. <laughs> She equates to it's all fucking punk girls. It's all different. A whole different thing. She's a punk. There's no competition. Like you said, there's no competition. So it's like Jordan versus fucking intramurals. But you know she fucking like goes out with a guy who's got like runes tattooed on his neck, though. What? That's that's She's... the one thing. You might get beaten up by that guy, but that's all right. Young, it's attractive fine. punk girl. Either totally by herself, always, reads has a cat, fucking cooks for herself, fucking did works, that's it. Recluse. Or, out partying every fucking night, a lot of different dudes on the line, or somewhere in between. So you're not special. She doesn't think you're fucking special. So ask. Maybe she'll add you to the roster. Cool? Add to the roster. Seriously. 
All right. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, it's, I just just be on the offensive. It's all right. So like, it, it, in in all things, it's better to be in pursuit. Just than be offensive. Like, to, to be waiting. Just be offensive. Let's talk all. about fucking stinky fingers. She's a punk. She'll probably fucking love it. Oh, you know, um, I, I fucking haven't washed my hands in a week. And then just smile at her. Cool. No, you don't have to touch me. It's okay. Nah, how about we just hang out and not even touch? Yeah, let's just, why don't we hang out on Skype? Yes, tell her that. Like, you live in the same court, or the same, cl- whatever, course, but you talk on Skype instead of actually hang. And the first time you are intimate, it's over the internet. And you're like, Perfect. oh. This is working out great. And you're like writing, you're like, oh, I want to run down there and fuck you so hard. And she's like, no. Too weird. No, keep it online. Keep online. You can hear her moaning. She lives in the fucking apartment downstairs. You can hear her moaning. You can hear the her fucking toy buzzing. And you're like, oh, wouldn't it be better if I just ran down there with my fucking big heart on? Big punk heart on? And gotcha? Like, no, nah, my door's being weird. No, nah, my door's weird. It doesn't lock. Oh, my, I, uh, I didn't put the dog fucking, the dog fence up. He'll run out. All different fucking excuses. This is always a new one. <laughs> always a new one. Oh, I think I have... My roommate has people over. It's weird. Meanwhile, she's moaning, like screaming in ecstasy. <laughs> making it weird anyway. Oh, I fucking didn't pay the light bill and it's dark in here. Yeah, it's just, it's, this is not going to work. Weirdly, it's not, it's the not in the mood. works fine. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be better if I just came down there? I can hear you. No. No, it's cool. Don't worry just, about it. You know, just I don't want you to stress yourself. Just out. keep it online. You just text me later. I mean, we're we're in a, I think <laughs> we're in a good place where we can. You Skype. can just yell down the stairway to me later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, think I think we're in a good place in our relationship where we can just like Skype all the time, even though you live downstairs. We share a Wi-Fi network. <laughs> <laughs> it's love. Not even like, it's yeah, love. It's we share Wi-Fi network. Finally, she gave me the kit. I think it's. It's uh, not an apartment key, but it's the the key to your uh, Wi-Fi. Perfect. And we do Skype sex. And and it's it's adequate. And it's like, wouldn't it be like better if I like came down there and we did it? Like, you came up here, you know? If it's weird. Yeah, I mean, it's clean up here. So my my door closes. My roommate's gone. Yeah, I don't even have you know. I never see him. He works nights, so we can you know. Just do it all night. And then, you know. And she's like, doesn't answer for a really long time. And then she had fallen. She falls asleep. And you're like left hanging forever. Literally and figuratively. Oh, this just got so dark. And then you see her at the bus stop on your way to Speedway. And she's like, oh, hey. Like the acts like she doesn't know you, even though you've been in a relationship for two months online. And you're like, I gotta get out of this town. <laughs> I think he'll move to Philly. I think Philly has the answers. And then you save. You work at a bakery in the early. Oh morning. my god! This has been episode one thirty. You'll just you'll keep this going until I fucking pull the plug. <laughs> well, we haven't talked about the bakery job where you stack cash. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug this week? Uh, Bear mattress shirts sold out, sold through. No, left. fucking nobody fucking bought enough because that's the downfall of Teespring. You need to take like a sold through. That's it. Uh, no, buy a fucking shirt. Maybe we're gonna come up with some overnight drive shirts. Are gonna na- knock you out. That's it. Yeah. Uh, cool. You're playing this weekend. Um, yeah, if you're around New York, um, you won't hear this in time, so never mind. <laughs> if you were around New York uh, last Friday, you could have seen me play music, but instead you were uh, you were you were playing Firewatch, and uh, you just <laughs> you know just, I downloaded. I, mean, I feel that. I also I was uncharacteristically bored the other night, and I download. I looked up a list of band games, like you know, like ethnic cleansing, like those very games. Very good. Very good. Riot, like the riot police game where you just like shoot people with water. And I downloaded the JFK assassination simulator. Oh, wow. It is fucking great. 
damn, I want to do this. I'm going to send I'll send it to you. I'll put it up on the the, the drive. It's uh Now are you Lee Harvey Oswald or can you be the shooter in the drain or the man from the the <laughs> grassy knoll or what's up? You cannot be f- awesome fucking radio morning zoo duo shooter in the drain. That first sucks. Of all. No, you're Lee Harvey Oswald and it's a shooting simulator and when you shoot you can fucking shoot through the governor and hit JFK. As as it happens. But you can disable the car in front of them and shoot everybody in a bloodbath. Oh, wow. Interesting. All different I kinds mean, of scenarios. Or sometimes if you shoot, the driver wiles out and like drives across the lawn and freaks out, which is what I would do. But afterward, it gives you a report on your shooting and tells you where your bullets went. Like a trajectory. I mean, how report. it's, it's what's the the reload situation like though? Like the the um, the Carcano had uh, it was, was kind of tough to fucking get the round in the chamber. It takes about three seconds per shot. Damn. Yeah, it's uh, very realistic, and you get like ten shots. That's it. This does sound fucking fantastic. It's great. I don't know why it was banned. No, awesome. Yeah. It's perfect. My life just got so much better. <laughs> Should I buy a new Xbox, like the new the new good Xbox? Should no. I do, like it's even though I never late. use this fucking thing? Should I just do it? Like it's too I don't late, know what to dude. do. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why this is a source of stress in my life. I need less things. You I don't do know why I'm talking about buying an Xbox. Okay, so ask Gabri. How would she feel if she's expecting dinner? She's working late, and she comes home. She's expecting dinner, and she hears the fucking gold, like you know, the Call of Duty sounds from the apartment instead. Uh, you know, I think she'd be all right with it. Think so? Hmm. Yeah, we got we've a, we've a pretty good understanding of uh, of of how we spend our time. Well, fuck it, do it. Uh, I don't know. How would you uh, feel fucking... if she walked into the fucking apartment and heard Kiss playing? I, hopefully, great. That happened a couple of days ago. <laughs> she walked in. I was playing Cold Gin. It was wonderful. Uh, so, are you gonna listen to Kiss tonight? I'm gonna Alexa play Cold Gin by Kiss. Um, yeah. Alexa Joel is still there. No, Ale- yeah. Alexa's not happening. She's not, not doing Alexa, it. Alexa, play Cold Gin by Kiss. And she's like, no. No, you've listened to this enough. <laughs> that's that's, that's plenty. Um, All right, fuck it. This has been episode 130. Let's um, go listen to Cold Gin by Kiss. How about Who Wants to Be Lonely? Great B-side. This has really been the Kiss good. Podcast. Just kidding. Um, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Talk to you, uh, 129, 130. We're really, uh, 130, trucking. We're trucking, man. We're on a fucking schedule to hit 200 by you January. I didn't feel like doing the podcast that I was in a bad mood. I was just like, ah, but, uh, schedule. No. I came home and I'm like, fuck it, schedule. You gotta I do fucking, these things. I was in the same boat. And then I took half an Adderall, which I'm hopelessly addicted to. Perfect. Really good. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. I feel fucking great now. I don't know how I'm gonna go to bed, but I feel great. No need. No need. Fuck it. All right. We'll see you next week on Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. Let's cue the music. Alexa, play Cold